FPS games are currently the most popular video game genre in the world, with competitive shooters dominating the scene, but also boomer shooters, survival games, and really anything in between. But what if you were to combine FPS with a genre that emphasizes tempos and having to do every action on a beat? Meet Metal Hellsinger, a rhythm FPS game from developer The Outsiders, a game that pays homage to the modern Doom games but with that rhythm style to it. I'd never heard of these two genres spliced together and since it had overwhelmingly positive reviews, it must be a great shooter, right? Well, I'm here to tell you, it damn right is. Meshing heavy metal music and boomer shooter mechanics that it's a blast to play through from the moment you start it off. I'm going to be covering what makes this shooter incredible and why I believe it to be the golden standard of this sort of game. Even though there are very few of these like Bullets Per Minute and the recently released Robo Beat, which looks great from its early access stages thus far. If you enjoy the video, like and subscribe and notifications turned on for more gaming content. Let's get into hell, shall we? Metal Hellsinger is a rhythm based FPS shooter, set in the depths of hell where you play as a female demon named the Unknown, who is a Hellsinger, a demon capable of having a voice and being able to sing. She loses her voice and finds out it's being held by a demon known as the Red Judge, and sets on a mission alongside her skull and friend Pazelius to get it back by any means necessary. That's the gist of the game's story really, but who plays these games for the story? Similar to the Doom Marine, you go in, kill demons, and have a bloody good time doing it. Throughout the game's cutscenes, Paz is the one who narrates the entire experience and I gotta say, it's amazing to the point where I didn't skip a single part where he was narrating because he just sounded so good. His calm and cool voice really helped to elevate the game as a whole and make it feel lived in to an extent since these kinds of games don't have that sort of thing other than an AI talking to you for objectives. I'm looking at you Vega and Sam. At least Sam's cool though. Gameplay loop is standard for a boomer shooter but with that rhythm to it. Almost every action must be accounted for with the beat or you'll deal less damage with your weapons and lose that sweet hit streak. Metal Hellsinger has a few systems in place to make it feel as old school as possible, such as the mentioned hit streak which as you go higher unlocks these boons that provide advantages such as faster ultimate build up and enemies exploding. You unlock these boons as you progress through the game's campaign. The Fury system adds a multiplier to your overall score and also amplifies your damage up to a maximum of 16 times. This all coincides together to create a score system that encourages you to push for those high scores and climb the leaderboards like the good old days of arcade gaming. Your score gets calculated at the end based on an assortment of stats and you can gauge and figure out what you can do better to go even higher. I mean, these top 3 guys have like 25 million score and I found it ridiculous but also realizing that metal is a skill based game that can be worth the grind and effort if you put the time in to get good at it. Actions are done through a visual element that shows when the beat is about to come in. Perform an action and as the arrow locks into the grey one, you'll get either a good or perfect rating. Good being okay but perfect for maximizing your damage output and score potential. It's a simple yet hard to master mechanic that takes some time getting used to. Trust me, once you get it down, you will never want to stop. There's also latency to be considered which can be calibrated to your own liking within the game's settings for both video and audio but I highly recommend to leave it as it is on zero to make sure that you hit the beat 90 to 95 percent of the time. I saw a steam guide on lowering that to be on negative values so that you always feel like you're hitting on point every time but I never found it to be an issue whilst playing the entire campaign. It was also a video from a few years ago so it may have been fixed by now. Calibrating audio always seemed to pull me at like 165 ms and while that's not a big deal, it can lead to inconsistencies in your button pressing, so just a warning in case you decide to do that. So in order to kill demons, you need weapons, right? Well, this game has you covered and we'll start off with Paz himself first, the Skull. Equivalent to a basic bitch pistol in Doom, the Skull shoots fireballs and can also be charged to crystallize enemies but I didn't learn about that until I already finished the game. Outside of the first level, I hardly used him and kept him as a narrator back pocket. Terminus is the unknown sword, capable of quick slashes and an overhead slash if you perform three successive beat hits in a row. Early on, you'll learn about ultimates, with each weapon having one ultimate and you can use this to change the course of a fight, albeit once it's used, it'll be on cooldown and you have to earn it by racking up kills and keeping that hit streak up. Again, simple but satisfying and even these must be played by the beat as well. The Terminus boosts your attack speed significantly for a few seconds, 
unleashing a flurry of attacks that need to be perfectly timed since it goes a bit quicker, but very satisfying if you can get an entire combo off. Persephone is the next gun you earn and this has to be my favourite weapon in the entire game. Any boomer shooter that has a shotgun and sounds amazing is all you need for a game to win me over. Outside of its pump shotgun style and slower fire rate, its ultimate makes up for it, firing a large piercing shot that shreds even the toughest of foes. I don't know man, there's just something about this gun that feels good and I can't quite put my finger on it even though I just said it like 5 seconds ago. The hounds are dual wielding pistols that make you feel like a gunslinger in hell, boasting a high fire rate and great damage. This is my go-to long range option to complement my Persephone. The ultimate spawns a clone of you alongside the pistols, acting as a temporary ally that shoots enemies alongside you, albeit for a little less damage. The trade-off isn't too bad and is more of a bonus to damage whenever you spawn it in. The Vulcan is a pump crossbow that does area of effect damage, particularly useful when you go up against these shielded guys who come later into the game. Its ultimate spawns a black hole that pulls everything into it, allowing potential wombo combos like simply shooting them with the crossbow while the demons are all bunched up, or switching to something like the Persephone and using its ultimate to quickly wipe a group out. Lastly, we have the Hellcrow. Dual wielding boomerangs that when thrown returns to you and can damage enemies up to two times from the moment you throw it and when it comes back to you. The ultimate summons a whirlwind of crows around you, dealing damage over time. The great thing about these weapons is you don't have to worry about reloading. There's also the DLC weapons but I won't be covering those for the video as I didn't buy them. One concept that I wasn't sure of when using these weapons was if the temper was adjusted for whatever weapon you're using. So the temper may be adjusted for the shotgun due to being slow and the temper may be adjusted for the sword due to being fast. I'm not sure if I'm explaining it right, but anyway, the tempo and flow of every level and song is the same, so you only have to account for the fire rate of a weapon. Since the Persephone is a pump shotgun, you have to account for two beats instead of one, unlike the pistols where you can just account for every beat because of how fast they fire. This is probably the best time to talk about the game's soundtrack and my god is it fantastic. It's like Doom, but it's a musical. Playing through Hellsinger reminded me of the modern Doom games a lot and I wouldn't be surprised if this was one of the games they got inspiration from when making this. Vic Gordon inspired and created an OST with a genre that hardly ever gets used in gaming and I'm glad it was chosen for a game involving hell and demons. It's exciting, thrilling and the riff raps got me so hyped for every stage I played in, with each level having its own track, all made by a rock duo known as Two Feathers. I haven't heard their previous works prior to playing this game, but after finishing this one, I may have to give it a shot. I'm not the best at describing this sort of music, so apologies for it being short since this is one of the major draws of Metal Hellsinger, but it's just amazing and really carries the game as a whole for me. Excluding the tutorial level, Metal Hellsinger has 8 levels, with each introducing new weapons and enemies. If you've played Doom or any other boomer shooter before, you've got your usual arenas each consisting of a bunch of enemies that you have to kill in order to proceed while keeping with the beat at all times. Health crystals within each arena heal your HP for a good amount and can also be earned by slaughtering enemies or glory killing them with a simple button press when a demon grows up. Killing demons on perfect shots also significantly boosts your score, you can also find and perform combos which further boost your score. You can find these combos that you learn in the codex. Quick reloading is a cool gimmick that saves a lot of time in fights and keeps your momentum which pops up with a golden beat when you're reloading. You can also slaughter enemies whilst reloading to refill it that way too. You have a few movement options which are jumping and dashing. You can jump two times and dashing provides iframes as well as being able to dash into enemies. It's also omnidirectional, so you can dash in any direction. I didn't do it too much in my footage, but I figured out towards the end of the game that you can dash upwards, which adds some verticality to the gameplay. You can also find secrets called Coat of Arms scattered throughout each level and I didn't find a single one the entire playthrough, so they must be really hard to spot. They give your guns an alternative skin when you collect an X amount of them, something cool to go for if you want to extend your playtime a bit. Sigils are runes, much like their Doom counterparts that provide massive bonuses, such as letting you keep your hit streak when taking hits and allowing your ultimate to charge up by itself. You earn these by doing torments, which are smaller scale missions set in small arenas and you gotta complete a certain objective in order to earn these. Each of these sigils can be ranked up three times. The various challenges include only killing enemies with slaughters, ultimates, and killing demons on the beat. All of them are viable and offer up different playstyles. 
For me, I opted to pick Street Guarding and Boon Momentum because I tend to play aggressive in any FPS I play, so I like to save a bit of the risk I get with running up to demons' faces. Outfits provide unique bonuses as well, but since I don't have the DLC, I won't be covering those either. The enemy variety is pretty good with your typical fodder, melee, and ranged enemies. My favorite enemies would have to be the Stalkers, green dudes who go invisible and shoot green goo at you. Their designs are so sick and I've never seen anything quite like it in a hellish setting. The bosses on the other hand leave a lot to be desired since you fight the Red Judge but for many aspect forms, which at first glance I thought was the same looking model until I went into the codex and found out that they each model differently. They sort of like add on to each other where it's similar but they come with an additional move or two but I didn't really find it too interesting or memorable, at least until you fight her at the end. It was just a matter of shooting and shooting and dodging and moving on to the next one. I wish more variety was put into here, just having different bosses so it'd feel more like a boss corner than a somewhat recycled fight. There's four difficulty modes, each putting more of an emphasis on beat matching, less resurrects and enemy damage the higher you go. Three are only unlocked at the beginning and I opted to play on the second difficulty, GOAT, since I've never played a game like this before. I didn't have any problems the whole way through, the game was balanced and any mistakes I made were on me and nothing else. Each of the difficulties also have their own scoreboard so you can be a top player in any of these bad boys if you put the time in. The campaign took me a total of 5 hours to complete, including the torments, but if you take the torments out, it's only 3 hours which is really short. Replayability can be said with the various difficulty options, but it's not enough to satiate my hunger and I wanted more. Hello, uh, post edit pep here. I do realize that there is another game mode called Leviathan mode, which is the game's horde mode that they added like late last year. And I was going to cover it for this video, but given the amount of time that I currently have to make stuff at the moment, I just don't have the time to be able to fully cover it without putting a few hours into it. So I decided not to talk about the leviathan mode here so i do apologize for that uh, i will be covering it in a youtube short though but for the sake of the video i won't be covering it so i do apologize visually this game looks stunning on the unity engine born of some amazing visuals art style and very interesting representation of how level design was top notch with plenty of moving room and verticality and while it could feel recycled in some places i never found it to be a problem given its short campaign length the game's accessibility options are really good allowing you to customize the rhythm indicator, reticle, and HUD. There's also a rhythm assist mode which makes it so every shot is played on B regardless of when you shoot if you just want to play a standard boomer shooter. Nice to have this here as an option for those who want it. In terms of DLC, do not buy the essential hits pack unless you want to support the developers. It's expensive, even during the Steam Summer Sale as I make this video and songs don't fit the aesthetic in any shape or form, so stay away from it. I wish the DLCs offered more than just new songs and weapons, like some more levels or continuing on the fight to heaven, which the game's ending bluntly tells you. Performance wise, I didn't have any problems running the game on high settings with my RTX 3080 and AMD Ryzen 3600, going well over 60 FPS and making some slight adjustments like turning shadows and SSAO off. I managed to hit around 95 to 100 for peak and never bothered to try low settings to see if it made a big difference or not. So, do what you will with that information. While short and sweet, with the exception of the Horde mode of course, Metal Housing is an exceptional rhythm FPS, a game that is the golden standard for these kinds of shooters. Couple that with a killer soundtrack and you'll be having the best time of your life, even if it's just for a few hours. If you love heavy metal, doom and boomer shooters, get this game. You won't regret it. Thanks for watching. If I missed anything, comment down below. And as always, I'll have more coming to you soon. Peace.